Well, the Richmond campus was in a beautiful building that had been designed by William Ward Watkin, who designed Rice. And it was a Mediterranean style with the most magnificent entrance. With steps going up to the school. And um, when you went in immediately, Ms. Kincaid's office was to the left and the main office where you checked in and so on was at the right. And then you either went right or left into the classrooms and the younger children were to the left and the older ones to the right and there was a playground in the back. The campus was, uh, of course, five acres there on Richmond Road, and uh, Richmond Road, of course, was just two driveways wide, you know, um, and now it's quite, quite wide. The surroundings were nothing like out here. It's, it's midtown, you know, it's, you're right in the middle of town, so to speak. A large number of students walk to school, for others, transportation varied. During World War II, yes, things were different because one, the Kincaid bus was begun and our parents couldn't drive us to school uh, because of rationing. The school provided the bus and it went by different uh, friends' houses, one after another after another. We didn't have 610 or any, any freeways that, to speak of, so my dad had all the shortcuts to <laughs> the old Kincaid School, you know, over on Richmond and Graustark. Lunchtime at school was quite the informal affair. But I think of the days that we were there in lower school, the circle drive on the end of of the building, Grostock end of the building. We were out there with our lunch bags, our, our brown bags and our lunch kits, having our lunch. In high school, there was a, a, a door off of the hall. The steps were there, wide steps, and we would sit there and have our lunch. Weather permitting and at your desk, if it rained, we ate uh, in what was called the shelter house, open on the sides and it had a roof. But that was about as close to a formal dining room that I think we ever had on the Richmond campus. Climate control at Richmond campus was a foreign concept. Oh, definitely no air conditioning. It was hot. The architect built the buildings for, you know, no air conditioning. And they had high ceilings. It had big windows. Uh, and you could have cross ventilation across the hall because there was no air conditioning at that time so that school started rather early and uh, everybody was home by three o'clock because it was pretty hot after that. Kincaid School in the early and mid 20th century was much smaller. The classes were of course a whole lot smaller. Uh, you can see the picture of the senior class back then and you know probably 12 people or something. <laughs> Mostly girls, very few boys. The Richmond campus was not that large. And toward the end of my high school, there was a separate high school building that was built. And later on, there was a, a gymnasium built in the, in the back. And um, there's where we had uh, theater productions as well as basketball games. The quirkiest feature on Richmond was a football field with a large tree in the middle. Kincaid played two or three seasons of football, passing around the tree, having the balls get caught in the branches, uh, having squirrels chirp at the runners as they went by. It was terrible. And everybody laughed at us and of course, being the laughing stock was something football coaches don't like very well. Miss Kincaid was not perturbed, however. But one weekend, the football coach got Jerome, who was the head janitor, Jerome and some of his friends, and the football coach went to Kincaid and they chopped the tree down and did away with the stump. So the coach sat in his office all morning 
had his things packed up because knew he was going to be fired. He waited for the summons from Ms. Kincaid, which never came. Friday night, there was a football game. Mrs. Kincaid came and stood by the bench, as she often did. She did not mention the tree. If anyone mentioned it to Ms. Kincaid, she didn't acknowledge it. And from that day until the day she died, as far as I know, she never mentioned the tree at all. The Richmond campus still conjures wonderfully specific memories for many. Students were asked to volunteer to hold the door open for the students coming in, and it was considered quite an honor to, to do that. I think my most com uh, compelling and to this day enjoyable memory is why gardenias are my favorite smelling flower. Back in the 40s, uh, graduation was, first of all, attended by the entire student body, not just by the seniors and family and friends. In the ceremony, the senior class walked through arches that were made with ivy, and in the ivy were entwined gardenia blossoms. As a result, the entire campus smelled like gardenias, and it was really a very, very uh, wonderful smell. And it's my favorite because that meant summer vacation started the next day. I, to this day, will stop and smell a gardenia and think about Kincaid graduation. Eventually, it became necessary to relocate the school. The school on Richmond had simply outgrown itself. They had many more applications than they could take and, and Ms. Kincaid uh, did not think it was a good thing or a necessary thing to be elite. She wanted to take as many qualified students as she could and it simply the school was too small. We just accepted it the way it was. I, I liked being there. But then when we came to this new fancy building, you know, we realized how much we'd been missing. <laughs> it was so much nicer and, you know, better lockers and things like that. Of course, the old campus fit the school at the time. And we were very, very fortunate to get the property that we did to create the new campus, I think. With the enlargement of the school, naturally you would have to have more area to accommodate. This campus feels more uh, elegant and more uh, complete and uh, finer equipment and all that. Uh, aside from the main building that was architecturally very nice looking, it was um, it was pretty rudimentary, as a matter of fact, as I look back on it. There was not really, when I got there, a library. Uh, there were places books would be in the study hall on the side and in uh, other classrooms, but there was no library. We did not get a full library until the uh, building just after the war uh, was built, the high school building. We did a great deal with, with not much at times. a search was made for a new location for Kincaid. It so happens that my dad uh, developed this Woolwick subdivision across the street, and he owned this, this acreage. And originally the school had, uh, had chosen a site that Rice owned with the old Houston Post building, it was Chronicle building now, right there at the, the loop in, in 59. And uh, they announced the freeway, and he said, look, y'all don't want to be there. And he said, uh, I'll get, he didn't give them the land, but he gave it to them at, at his cost, which was considerably less than the value of it, and sold it to them on a slow note. And uh, I think the resident campus is, what, 43 acres or something like that. And so uh, there's quite, quite, a, quite a change from the, from the old campus. The choice was not a popular one with some. And when it came out in the newspaper, 
sort of before it should have, that the track that they had settled on was out here. People were appalled. Who in the world would send their child to the country to school? It was too far out. San Filippi was a mud track. No one would ever live out here. And the only thing out here were feed stores and filling stations with one pump. The uh, San Filippi Bridge wasn't, for quite a few years, it wasn't in. So you had to go all the way around Memorial and you know come in that way. Well, fortunately, the board of directors was much smarter about the future than the general public. The sense of being in the country lasted for a full decade and a half. I started Kincaid, I guess, in the fall of 1973, and um, that was, uh, I guess, during the summer that um, San Filippi, they made it go through from Voss to Meet Memorial. So it was great for those of us that lived inside the loop that we didn't have to take Memorial all the way around to get um, to school. From Voss to um, Kincaid. Yes, it was pretty much vacant, as I remember. <laughs> Those who visited the new campus and Memorial, however, were impressed. I came here, it was fall of uh, 56 or spring of 57 when they first opened the campus and uh, I was accompanying the choir at San Jacinto High School. And uh, I still remember it because even when we, those days when we came here, they, had, they hadn't put up the cement sidewalks yet, so that we were all on boards. And I remember almost falling off once. My choir teacher, Nancy Taylor, had always said, it was like Shangri-La out here. And this is before these new buildings. You know, and, it, and it was, it is, it's like Shangri-La. It really is. That was a fun at but the first two weeks of school, they hadn't finished building the building, so we all got to go to school for half, and half a day. We'd go over to Lamar and have lunch under the trees with our friends over there. Most notable was the natural beauty. I still remember that day, actually, just because certain things you just remember, you know, and because and, it was so beautiful in the trees, the whole setting, and there was, I thought, nothing like it in Houston, and I grew up in Houston. It, it was just, Unbelievable that it was, you know, a high school, junior high, and elementary that looked like this. Campus in the early days was quite different than today. When I first got here, several people lived on campus. What is now the development office was the where the headmaster lived. And I lived there for the first. Um, Oh, I don't know, 10 years or so, I guess it was. And uh, then we needed some additional room when we wanted to expand the uh, alumni operation. And uh, so that was the ideal place for it. But what's been gone for a long time is the head maintenance man lived on campus. His house was out there by the football field uh, where the concession stand now is. It was very, very private. The school's footprint was smaller. This area, which is now the um, underclassmen hall, I guess the freshman hall was the middle school hall. And that um, property just in front of it um, that fronts the campus um, was all, was just grassy because that's where we held our graduations. My graduation, the students, the graduates were on bleachers in the parking lot and all the parents were in, seated in that grassy area right there. Most importantly, the Memorial Campus felt like home to the students. They love the freedom of being here because in the Richmond campus, you had Richmond right in front of you and you had to be very careful. The little kids couldn't play in the front because it was a dangerous road. And here they felt free and they felt so much uh, that this was their campus. Mm -hmm.